In this video, we'll take a look at what to do when you receive the dreaded message preparing automatic repair when you turn on your computer. There's nothing worse than to see that message on the screen, so let's take a look on how you can fix the issue. You can try and disable driver signature enforcement. In order to improve security in the Windows operating system, Microsoft introduced driver signature enforcement. It's a feature that is designed to ensure that users of Microsoft can only load drivers that have been signed by Microsoft. This though can bring with it some inconveniences for users. So if you want to use some less official drivers, old unsigned drivers or drivers developed by yourself, this feature needs to be disabled first before you can move on. To do this, go to Advanced Options, Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, then you want to go to Startup Settings, and then Restart. Once in the Startup Settings menu, you want to select Option 7, which will go ahead and temporarily disable driver signature enforcement. If you find that this boots up your computer, then you can go into a command prompt and turn this on permanently by running the following command. If you need to turn it off, then just use the same command, but instead of on at the end, just change this to off. Sometimes when you see the automatic repair window, you may see it creates a log file called srttrail.txt for you to review. Normally Windows 10 will attempt to repair errors on startup, but sometimes this may fail, and this is where it will record events of the startup process. One thing you can do is go and open this file up to see if it will give you any more details on what could be causing the issue. Go to Advanced Options, Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, then you want to go to Command Prompt. If you get prompted for your password, go ahead and enter this. This will be the password you normally sign into Windows with on your computer. Once in Command Prompt, I'll change over to the C drive, as this is where Windows is installed. Plus I want to go to the path of where the srttrail.txt file is. So I'll type in CD, which means to change directory, and then type in the SRT folder location. To confirm I'm in the correct location, I'll type in DIR, which will list all the files in the directory. And we can see the file we're looking for is at the bottom of the list. Type in the name of the file, srttrail.txt, and hit enter. This will go and open the file and give us information on what was happening during the startup repair process. So you can see it gives you a list of the tests performed and it gives you the result for each test. So scroll down through the list to check the tests performed to see if any tests failed. If it fails, it will give you more details on what it failed on and references via an error code on the right which may help pinpoint the cause of the problem. As everything completed successfully here, we can close out of this file. We can then try and see if there's any errors associated with the Boot Configuration Data Store, or BCD as it's referred to. To try and rebuild the BCD store, type in bootrec.exe space forward slash rebuild BCD. This option scans all disks for installations that are compatible with Windows and also lets you select the installations that you want to add to the BCD store. And you can use this option when you need to completely rebuild the BCD store. So that's completed successfully. Next, type in bootrec.exe space forward slash fix MBR. This option writes a Windows 10 compatible master boot record to the system partition but does not overwrite the existing partition table. So you can use this option to resolve master boot record corruption issues. Once that's completed, type in bootrec.exe space forward slash fix boot. This option writes a new boot sector to the system partition by using a boot sector that's compatible with Windows. If you receive an access is denied message, then you'll need to run another command first. Type in bootsect space forward slash nt60 space all. This will update the volume boot code on the partition used to boot windows. And here you can see that it successfully updated on at least one volume. Then type in bootrec.exe space forward slash fix boot again. 
and this time you can see it completed successfully. Once that's done, let's close out of command prompts and go to continue to see if this fixed the issue and loads Windows. Sometimes it could just be a case of what USBs you have attached to your computer at the time. Maybe you've purchased a new USB device or maybe you're using an old USB device where it's having compatibility issues. To eliminate this as being an issue, unplug all USB devices except for essential USB attachments like your mouse and keyboard to see if this makes a difference. Try and boot your computer now to see if this does the job. Next we'll use the check this command to try and repair Windows. Go into advanced options, troubleshoot, go into advanced options, then command prompt. Here we can use the check this command to check the file system and file system metadata of a volume for logical and physical errors. Type in chkdsk space forward slash f space forward slash r space c colon and hit enter. The forward slash f switch will scan and attempt to repair errors. The forward slash r switch looks to repair errors and scan for bad sectors. And c colon is where you have your installation of Windows installed. My installation is on the C drive, but if you have your installation of Windows installed on another drive, then change the C colon to the correct drive letter. This can take a while, so just be patient with this as it goes through a number of stages before completing. It will examine the file system structure before carrying out any fixes on errors or bad clusters that are found. So that's completed, so let's close out of command prompt. and go to continue to see if this fixed the issue and loads Windows. Next you want to check the hardware on your computer. Maybe the issue is due to a memory module that could be causing an error. If you have two memory modules at the back of your laptop or in your computer, you could always try and remove the first module and see if the computer boots okay. Now make sure you turn your computer off and unplug the power cable before attempting this. Also, be careful when removing your memory as you ideally want to be using a static band and if not removed correctly it could damage your memory from a static shock which can be damaging to electronic devices or components. If still an issue then put the first memory module back in and take the second memory module out to see if this works. If that doesn't work then put the second memory module back in and power on your computer. Sometimes just reseating the memory modules can help just in case one module is loose. Alternatively, it could be an error with the hard drive itself. If you receive an error like this, saying machine check exemption BSOD, then this can be caused by faulty hardware like your hard drive. So it would be worth trying to reseat your hard drive just in case this is the issue. Turn your computer off and open the case into your computer and check the connections to your hard drive. You can try and disconnect and then reconnect the hard drive. Put the case in back onto your computer and power on to see if this helps resolve the issue. If you find that you can't recover your computer and you need to reset it, then you can do this by going into advanced options, troubleshoot, and reset this PC. Here we'll select that we want to keep all files. Choose an account to log in with. This will be the account you log into your computer with. I'll go ahead and pop in my details here. So it will go ahead and ask you how you want to reinstall Windows. You can download from the cloud if needed, which is a good way to get a fresh copy of all your Windows installation files from Microsoft. I'd recommend trying to reinstall using the local copy you have on your computer first. Now if you have problems with the local reinstall, then you can always go back and try the cloud download option. So now it's ready to reset the computer. Here it will remind you that resetting will change settings back to their defaults. Keep personal files, reinstall Windows from this device and remove all apps and programs that didn't come with this PC. Select reset to start the process. Now this can take a while depending on your computer hardware so I'll go ahead and speed up the video for this part.
Once that's completed, I'll log into the computer. And there you go, the computer reset successfully. And here it will show me the apps that were removed in the process. So I hope you found this video useful and if it helped you out then let me know in the comments which fix worked for you. If it didn't fix the issue then check out one of my previous videos which lists more fixes you can try to resolve the issue. Thanks for watching and don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more tutorials.